so I, I started looking into things more and then I came across sex slavery. Mm, and yeah. I looked into all the justifications. It's just too weird. It's one of those things that's too obviously weird. Yeah. But it's so weird that even the conservative people don't really like talking about it. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's even the most conservative people I've spoken to yeah. are a bit like they know we should be careful about yeah. it because it's yeah. so weird. Yeah, it's it's not a nice thing. You know what I mean? And I contacted a sheikh, a very well-known sheikh in the United States, and I explained this to her. I, I reached out to so many well-known people. I'm like, I'm struggling. Mm. Please help me. I don't want to lose my faith. And I told her I'm in particular struggling with sex, slavery, and slavery, mm. and whatever. And she recommended me this book mm. called Islam and Slavery, written by Jonathan J. C. Brown, who's a white. Oh, A. C. Brown. Yeah, 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 I know. He's a right. white. He's good. He's a white convert. I mean, he's not good, but he's he, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's actually good. pretty uh, into good writer. Yeah. He tells it like it is. Yeah, he doesn't bullshit around no. that, which I liked, actually. Yeah, which people like, said a few times, they, yeah. they gave him credit for including some of the shit he includes in this yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's bad. Yeah. The sheikh recommended me this book, knowing I'm on the brink hmm. of losing my faith. And I'm just like, why would you do this? I'm just saying, I'm like, she's in on this. Right. Oh, you <laughs> think she's a she's, she's, ex yeah. yeah, she's in on this. <laughs> so if, she, you, if you were like like a sheikh or a sheikh or something you just do that you just yeah, stay yeah, in the yeah, closet low key, like, people would come to you be like oh you're worried about sex slavery here's a book that says it's okay yeah <laughs> no here's the book that literally says oh my god it's just i remember reading um omar was playing ps4 and i just i was reading it uh, the book in the other room and i was terrified to pick up this book i like yeah. waited months wow it was sitting on my shelf like watching wow. me like you're ready you're gonna open you're gonna me up one day up you're now? gonna lose yeah, it yeah so anyway, I pick it up one day, I get the, the nerve, and I open it, and it's talking about uh, the Sahaba Umar patting down the breasts and butt and stuff of the slave women in the market, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> You're like, I'm done. No, 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 no. He'll tell you. I I literally have the book, and I march in all happy into the other room, and he's on his PlayStation. And he's like, what have I done? Then, he's like, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> and my life is flashing in front of his eyes. And then I'm like, babe, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? He's just like, Surely it's not authentic. <laughs> <laughs> Typical I, Muslim apologetics. Like, in this book, it talks about how the Sahaba were serial polygamists and how yeah, many wives they yeah, had. That's which crazy. I was like, oh my god. I yeah, I remember this. Like, um, I remember like going, okay, well, you know, times of war, you can kind of do this and that and blah blah blah. But then, but then, like the Prophet, certain benchmark for mankind. Mm, yeah. The Sahaba, certain benchmark. Tabi'in, some some other benchmark. Yeah. But you look at what the Sahaba were up to and it was like... It's wild. It's like serial dating. It's, it's like wild. Tinder gone wild. Like, it's yeah. crazy. They were like, just marry, divorce. They, they often that They love to talk about the kafir hookup culture. Y'all were doing the same thing. <laughs> talk about the hijab because you have a tipping point, you passed it, but you're wearing the hijab. Mm. What happens with that? It was so funny. I, I went through a hijab phase. I even dabbled in the niqab, you Ooh. know? But why, was the, why, would you, why did you dabble with that? What was the point? Um, basically, I felt like I needed to be hyper-religious because I was a wife. And I needed nice. to be... I, I perceived Omar as very religious and his family, because they are. Mm. And I was like, I need to be better. Right, yeah. But I didn't properly wear it. I just right. dabbled with it. <laughs> and he hated it. He was right. like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> dude, anyway, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, when we were living in London, um, I, it was so funny because I just said to Omar, I was like, I hate that when people see me wearing this hijab, they perceive things about me before they even talk to me because they know certain things about Islam. They'll assume that I'm not supportive of the LGBT right. community. Right, which you're very, you're very yes, pro-LGBT. Yes, yes. And all these other things. Mm. And I just like, I hate that they assume that before I even open my mouth. Mm. And then Omar would just be like, well, that's their problem. And I'm like, yeah. but they're right. Because yeah. technically this is a symbol of that. Right. And so I started wearing the turban, you know? Yeah, you went the three and phases. I, it was turban, so funny. It was so funny. It's because someone, I forget who, maybe you remember, babe. Shoot. Someone telling me that uh, I look like a Jew. You you said that a Jew said shalom a to Jew you. A Jew did say shalom oh, to you me. Try, oh, because you were wearing... I'm white and I was wearing a turban. Uh, and I would wear like wide-legged pants. I looked like uh, an, a religious Jew. Uh, and I was like, I hope they think I'm Jewish and not Muslim. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, I'm like having a crisis right now. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. all these things. You just want to like, be invisible. I just want to be... I just want to... Yeah. I don't want to be held accountable for yeah, anything right yeah. now. And then, so yeah, I wore the turban and then it went beanie. And then, you know, the beanie route. Once it's beanie, you're, you're, you're done. Downhill. You're, you're done. done. It's gone. How did the Muslims around you react? I wasn't really around many. Like, I had a uh, friend at the time who was a convert as well. And she's also left. Yeah. <laughs> I helped her leave. Is that common? Oh, it's very common. It's 
very common. Because you know, people, Muslims always say this thing that fastest going religion. Look, people here's convert all the, left and right. Yeah, they also all, leave left and right. Yeah, exactly. But you never hear those stories because it's so. And that's why we're doing this video. That's why we're doing this video. Yeah. What did your family do when they saw you without the hijab? They were thrilled. Yeah. yeah my, why were they happy? Because my family knows I am a very open-minded liberal person, and they thought I was stifling myself. Right. My mom thought I was hiding myself. Um, and I use the hijab to hide. Um, I'm a very bubbly uh, person. And I, I, I am. Mm. I, I just felt like I was hiding myself. Mm. And um, yeah, my sister cried with joy mm. just because mm. I. I so they didn't try to convert you I was no, into they didn't. Christianity. They didn't. No, none of that. My dad, to his credit, he's accepted that. It's just mm. not my path, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong, we'll talk about it sometimes, but mm. there's not an expectation. Sure, sure. And sure. I, I go to church sometimes to watch him give his sermons because mm. I support that. But yeah. Um, they were very happy. You're masked because you're, uh, you just don't want to be recognized, not because you're really anonymous, you're out to people. Yeah, just like out, Omar. yeah. Did you tell Muslim friends and how did they react? So that is something that Omar, Omar went through. Um, my, I told my convert friends who mm. were still in it that I left. And, um, I told my, my Quran teacher that I was, I left. Mm. And they tried really hard, to, especially my Quran teacher, who's a lovely person. Mm. I, I love her. Mm. Um, I, she, she tried to tell me, please don't leave. And, mm. like, and like, it was just a lot of mental gymnastics mm. to try to get me to stay. Mm. And, um, yeah, but they weren't, I feel like with converts, especially the converts I were, was around, they weren't super hardcore. Yeah, right. And so they weren't vicious to me. But, Did you lose friends? Yeah. Yeah, it just, it was awkward. Yeah, it, it, that's the thing. Yeah. Often it's not like someone will shout at your face and say, you know, how dare you do this? It, it's that it's fizzling. awkward fizzling out. Yeah. And I kind of always think, well, it's sad, but if that's what's going to happen, if you can't package, yeah, if that's what your relationship with me was built on, then, then we've never had a relationship. Exactly. And it's yeah. like in life, some people are in your life for a season and yeah. they they help you grow and then they're on your way and or you help them grow and then they're on their way and that's life. You know? We got a lot of converts watching this or people who've just left Islam who are converts. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? Your experiences aren't invalid and you're not stupid. Um, I feel like a lot of ex-Muslims who are born into Islam love to belittle converts. You're so mm. stupid. How could you choose this? Like, what an idiot. Like, and that's damaging. Um, it invalidates our experiences. You've made a video about this on your channel. Yeah, I watched yeah, it. Yeah. I've really appreciated what you said. It doesn't make um, me angry. I was just like, this is so dumb. Like, you got people who are born into Islam feeling superior than people who've converted as if they had a more valid experience. Yeah. It's like converts go through almost sometimes worse stuff. Yeah. These people act as if people don't fall into cults every day. Like, I'm sorry, but a lot of religions have cult aspects. Mm. That's just life. Read up on cults. Mm. Um, and it's just... Uh, it's at the end of the day, there's a lot of propaganda and it pulls you mm -hmm. in and people are very susceptible to brainwashing mm -hmm. and indoctrination mm -hmm. and it's, it's dangerous. It can be mm -hmm. dangerous. If you are a convert, um, that's fine. I, it, I, I just want people to be happy and happy, safe yeah. at the end of the yeah. day. I'm not here to like, like end Islam. Like I'm not like, no, like I'm just, I'm there's enough people leaving Islam. Yeah, exactly. Kind of I don't need do to do anything. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do. And for the people who've left, yeah. people who are converts, who are sort of just leaving or at that precipice where you've mm -hmm. been, what would you say? Find people who accept your experiences and also just n don't belittle yourself. I, I that's what I want to say. I, cause I felt like, and Omar knows, I've told, I've told him, I feel like for him, he had no choice. He mm. was born into Islam. I'm the idiot that chose it. Even mm. I have felt that way. Mm. I love to do something I learned in therapy. Like, if I have 14-year-old me sitting right where you are, I know how much her mm. confusion she mm. was going through. I know what mm. was going on. Mm. Would I look at her and be like, you're an idiot? Yeah. No, yeah. I would hug her yeah. and let her cry, you know? Like, I think that's healing your inner mm. child, mm. you know? Mm. And it's just like, I know mm. what was going on. Mm. And, yeah, I think... Um, have have gentleness and empathy and kindness with yourself because I know I am so ready to give that to other people but then I don't give it to myself right. so easily yeah. and that's I think the biggest thing I think it? the biggest yeah. thing yeah amazing thank you for doing this obviously there'll be lots of comments down below mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll send the not crazy ones over Please to you guys filter. <laughs> I'm, I'm and... sensitive <laughs> And and then and then we'll we'll try to respond to any comments you guys might have and questions about the story. So thank you so much. 